In the last lesson, we learned about different AWS services and how to create our first BATO3 client. Now, let's dive into cloud storage with AWS S3. S3 lets us put any file in the cloud and make it accessible anywhere in the world through a URL. Managing cloud storage is a key component of data pipelines. Many services we will learn will depend on an object being uploaded to S3. The main components of S3 are buckets and objects. Buckets are like folders on our desktop. Objects are like files within those folders. But there's a lot of power hidden underneath. Buckets have their own permissions policies. They can be configured to act as folders for a static website. They can generate logs about their own activity and write them to a different bucket. The most important thing that buckets do, they contain objects. An object can be anything, an image, a video file, CSV, or a log file. There are plenty of operations we can do with objects, but for now, let's focus on what we can do with buckets. What can we do with buckets using BATO3? We can create a bucket, list buckets that we have in our account, and we can delete a bucket. We can only store objects in buckets, so knowing how to work with buckets is a crucial component of S3 knowledge. Let's dive into some buckets. Let's start off by making a new bucket called GID requests. We create a BATO3 client that lets us interact with AWS S3. Then we call the client's create bucket method, passing the bucket name as the argument. Ta-da! We have a shiny new bucket. We can see it in the console as well. Keep in mind that bucket names have to be unique across all of S3. Otherwise, we will get an error when trying to create one. Now that we can create a bucket, let's get a list of all the buckets we have in S3. Once again, we create a BATO3 S3 client. Then we call the list buckets method on the client. When S3 responds, it will give us some additional response metadata, but it will include a dictionary under the buckets key. Let's get that dictionary and print it out. We can see our new bucket name and the time that it was created. Now that we have this dictionary, we can run it through a for loop and perform an operation on multiple buckets. Let's say we don't need the GAD requests bucket anymore. Let's delete it. Once again, we create the BATO3 S3 client. Then we call the delete bucket method. Alas, our bucket is gone. If we tried to delete it and it didn't exist, we would have gotten an error. It's nowhere to be found in the console either. We will learn more operations on buckets as we get further in the course, but we won't learn them all. Get in the habit of reading BATO3 documentation for all the methods we can do on an Amazon Web Service. In this lesson, we learned about how to work with a key component of S3, buckets. We learned that buckets contain objects, how to create buckets, how to list buckets, and how to delete buckets. We also learned that there are more operations that we can read about in the BATO3 docs. Now we're ready to dive into buckets.